Coral reefs are some of the most breathtaking natural wonders on our planet. They line about a quarter of the coastlines in the tropics. Coral reefs have existed for at least 450 million years. They function underwater very much as the rainforests do on land. They are complex symbioses with a huge variety of species of plants and animals. More than a third of all sea creatures live on coral reefs, which are both their living quarters and their dining room. Dr. Steve Miller and an international team of scientists are studying the colorful world of the corals on behalf of the National Oceanic Atmosphere Administration, or NOAA. Their office is the Aquarius, a unique underwater station off the coast of Florida. Aquarius is an underwater lab. There is not one like it anywhere else in the world today. It allows scientists to live and work underwater for extended periods of time to study endangered coral reefs. Aquarius is specifically important because it gives scientists the bottom time, the time to work on the reef itself that they wouldn't be able to get if they were doing conventional diving. The Aquarius, which weighs 81 tons, was lowered and anchored at a depth of more than 60 feet in 1993. The aquanauts, as Steve Miller and his colleagues like to call themselves, work in very tight conditions on the lab and sometimes stay underwater for up to two weeks. They're gaining fresh insights into life on the reefs during their day and night expeditions. A total of 110 countries on Earth have coral reefs on their coastlines. If the ecosystem in the oceans is intact, an absolutely infinite variety of shapes and colors adorn the underwater world. Corals are often called flower animals, a term which shows how uncertain we are whether corals are really plants or animals. Corals are really remarkable organisms. They look like rocks, but they're really animals and they're animals that have single-celled algae living in their tissue. The relationship between the algae and the coral is what allows them to be so successful on coral reefs. Algae and corals cannot live without each other. The coral provides food for the algae. Tens of thousands of coral polyps fish for plankton using their tentacles. They push their catch into their muscular opening and digest it in their body cavity. Their discharge builds at the foot of the coral as limestone. Huge limestone castles are formed in time. They grow by up to 10 centimeters a year. The coral polyps are also responsible for propagation. They discharge billions of sperm and eggs. Coral larvae are formed from the fertilized egg and deposited at the bottom of the reef where they start life as coral polyps. The newborn polyps then attract new algae, a cycle which also brings benefits to the coral. The algae through photosynthesis capture light energy and transfer it to chemical energy that is used by the corals. The algae in return receive nutrients from the corals. A wonderful symbiosis. But coral reefs are highly sensitive systems. Scientists have noticed the colors of corals have been increasingly fading since 1979. Many coral reefs have turned into bare limestone skeletons. The increase in the temperature of the sea after global warming is one of the main reasons why the corals are dying. Overfishing, damage done by tourism and shipwrecks, as here off the coast of Samoa, are other factors. A major part of the coral reef of this Pacific island is now dead after a ship was left stranded on the Rose Atoll in 1993. Scientists are working hard to artificially create coral reefs to stop the coral from dying out. Hurgada on the Red Sea is just one example. Here they use electrolysis to form limestone, the basic substance in a reef. To do this, they have lowered an iron grid connected to an electrode onto the dead reef. By introducing an electric current, the limestone which has been released in the seawater is bonded and solid limestone is created. It collects in greater and greater amounts on the iron grid. The corals believe this is a reef and settle on it. 
This method will soon be used worldwide after its initial success here. A lot of people ask if it's too late. You know, why should we care about trying to save coral reefs at this point? Well, it's not too late. There are still spectacular reefs that can be found in many different places, and there are really important things that we can do to turn it around on a local scale. Uh, it, it's really an optimistic kind of approach we're taking. Coral reefs are so important, they're so spectacular, they're really the gems of our ocean, and we are fighting to not only save them, but to protect and conserve them. It can only be hoped that scientists like Steve Miller will receive greater support for their projects in the future. Current forecasts assume that 40% of coral reefs worldwide will have been destroyed within the next 30 years if we do not take appropriate action. It's a scenario which could have catastrophic consequences for our oceans. Countless species of fish and marine plants which live on the reefs would die out.